Hi, it's Elvire and it's evening now and I'm just really sitting very relaxed here. It's um, oh, it's eight o'clock and I just wanted to, to make a little video to talk about everything that's going on with me but hopefully you'll get some nuggets out of it. And it's mostly on personal development because I believe that that is still one of the most important things that a person can do for himself or herself is to develop themselves. I've been doing that for quite some time now, who I would say probably over 10 years. Um, I've, been, I've been on that path for probably 30, 35 years, but you know, just off and on, off and on, off and on, not really, not really focused. That did not really happen until um, I bumped into Bob Proctor. I was introduced to Bob Proctor and, and I studied with him. So this is about seven years ago now. And I really learned a lot. I learned a lot about thinking. I learned a lot about focusing, about setting your intentions, what it is that you want in life. And I've been struggling off and on, I honestly tell you that, because there are many factors that come into play when you want to really, you know, step onto that path of being successful. Well, you're actually always successful. As long as you're above ground, you're successful. It may not always look like that, but you are. And it's into it's in your hands to, to create the magnificence of what you truly are destined to be. It took me some time to come to the realization that, you know, there is this, this as, as Wallace Wattles says in his um, Science of Getting Rich, there is this original substance. I had a hard time understanding that, that that was energy. That's what Wallace Wattles was talking about, energy. Everything is energy. And with our thoughts, which are a form of energy, we can create whatever we want to create. We can shape our lives through our thoughts. And once you come to terms with that, there is another session or another section of your life that may kick up a little bit of a storm. And it's actually, a lot of it is ego-based. And you have to be very much aware of that. It's like the voices in your head. When you have an idea, that voice in your head says, you're going to do what? Who the hell do you think you are? Are you good enough? And you have to learn to deal with that. Never fight it. I have learned not to fight it because the more you fight, the more it resists. You just gently coax it down the stairs and say like, thank you very much for sharing. Not now. Um, please, you know, there's the door. Thank you. And just walk it through the door and get it out of the door. You have to figure out what it is that you truly love to do. Everything is energy. So whatever you do, put your energy in motion. Put it into a direction where you feel that you can excel at a certain point. For everything, you need to develop yourself. You need skills. I mean, let's face the fact. Um, you were born. You had to learn to crawl. You had to learn to stand up. Then you wanted to sit on a little bicycle. You had to learn that. Um, you wanted to learn how to walk. Everything is learned and you can learn anything anything is possible when you set your mind to it and everything is based on energy so when you focus on something literally it becomes very clear the attraction factor becomes very clear on that one thing that you want to attract and everything around you is just you know, it falls by the wayside. It's, in, it's, it's behind the curtains almost. So your focus is your attraction factor. Your focus is the same as if, if you were to have a magnifying glass and you can harness the sun on either your leg or on dried leaves. When you do it on your leg, it just burns at a certain point. But that same focus is what you do, your thoughts. You focus your thoughts the attraction factor of what it is that you want. Now, as I mentioned briefly before, a whole other ray of things come into play here. And that is, am I good enough? Do I truly deserve it? Am I worthy? 
And that is what a lot of people, especially women, struggle with. <laughs> it's very interesting to find that that to find out that a lot of women they they put a ceiling on their income, for instance, because they can never earn more than their father or than their mother. You know, that's that's you can't do that. Why? I mean, their parents would most likely be very, very proud if they were so successful and earn more. So that's something that you need to learn to understand and to deal with it and to literally nip it in the butt because it's it's that voice again in your head, your ego-based voice that tells you that you can't do that. So deal with it, coax it down the stairs. This is, you see, personal development is something that you do not just once or twice, you do it ongoing. Once you step onto the path, when you've, when you've made the decision that you want to improve your life, that you're not happy with your life, not totally unhappy, maybe you are totally unhappy, but you are not happy with the way your life is going. You want to make changes. It's an ongoing process. It doesn't stop because once you stop, it's like stop breathing. It doesn't work anymore. So you have to continue to go. You want to read books. So many. I have read so many books. And one of the reasons why I wanted to make this little video is that we humans are often very impatient. We want it now. Instant gratification. We live in a society of instant gratification. Unfortunately, it doesn't work that way. It takes time, especially the older you get. If you want to make changes, you've been on that, I don't want to say wrong path, but not on your truly chosen path or your not woken up yet path for quite some time. So if you're going to a different direction, that takes a little bit of doing. Breaking habits, getting rid of your paradigms, many books have been written about it, takes a little bit of doing, but you can do it. Because a paradigm is a group of habits and a habit is something that you do over and over and over and over and over again. Like tying your shoelaces, you can do that in the dark with your eyes closed, you can tie your shoelaces. That is a habit. That is a habit. Something that you do over and over again and you attach no more emotion to it. That is a habit and it turns into a paradigm. You can shift that. You can shift it. It's all expressing energy in one way or another. As long as you keep that energy, you know, in the forefront, that everything is energy, that you are energy, that energy is all around you. Ideas are energy. They are all around you. You can attract them to you. Sometimes you get a nudge, you get an idea, you get a hunch. Focus on it if you like it. And the more you focus, the more you attract it to you. Most important, what I wanted to tell you is that you need to be patient with yourself. You've got to love yourself for what you're doing. Because if you don't, you're shooting yourself in the foot. You're putting negative energy on yourself when you want to improve yourself. That's positive energy. It takes time. It really takes time. I realize now sometimes that I'm actually surprised how much time it has taken me. But now, after these seven years of, of, of being pretty intense, busy with it on a daily basis, I'm beginning to connect dots. Because I have read Think and Grow Rich probably 15 times, Psycho-Cybernetics probably four times, The Science of Getting Rich probably six times, um, Conversations with God, I've read those. You name all the big books. Um, I'm reading also again The Magic of Believing by Claude Bristol. All these books, I always call it Redance Around the Same Fire, but it comes all from a different kind of angle. And I believe that's necessary because it's that one way that truly hits home for you when you go like, oh, now I get it. Now I get it. One of the things that I realized last Saturday, a couple of days ago, as I was sitting and watching Avatar again, all of a sudden it hit me and I said to my husband, you know, he made this movie in his imagination. He got that from somewhere. 
Because as I said, ideas are in the air. Everything is in the air. You can just tap into it. That means what is what is in the air already is. So if Avatar is created, and it's such a beautiful movie, and I, I really hope you've seen it. I've seen it, I don't know what, five, six, seven, ten times. I don't know anymore. I know that for sure I've seen it twice in IMAX, which is breathtaking. The first time it was in IMAX, I was just tears all the time. But just know that your imagination is based on truth, is based on the existence of something somewhere. Somewhere in the universe it is. And it takes time to understand that that's how it is. It came to me. It came to me and it was a realization that was for me a breakthrough moment. And I went like, wow, I'm seeing a lot of things very different now that I've come to that point and that I realized that whatever you imagine, it already exists. And that's what so many books tell you also. Start with the end result in mind. Well, the end result, sorry to burst your bubble, is not really your idea. It's an existing idea that you just happen to make yours. But it already exists somewhere. So even though you put yourself in that idea, it does exist somewhere. So see yourself with that. Know that it's there because it is already existing. And then it makes it so much easier to focus your energy on it, to draw it closer and closer. And the more you focus, the faster you draw it to you. Does it come overnight? I don't know. Could be. I, I doubt it very much. It may seem sometimes like it's overnight, but you probably did a lot of preparational work. It's like what people say to Bob Proctor, oh, you were an overnight success with the secret. <laughs> he always laughs about that because he says, yeah, I was an overnight success. I worked over 20 years to get to this point. So yeah, I was an overnight success then, but I did all the preparational work up till this moment. And then all of a sudden it was a success. There is always work involved. There is always action involved in in, in, in anything that you do, the same in, in personal development. What lies underneath it is that you truly desire to step onto that path, to change your energy, to change your vibration, because that's what you're doing. Energy vibrates, everything vibrates. It's hard for us to see, but that's what it is. Everything vibrates. So you vibrate as well, and you're probably not completely vibrating on the frequency that you want to vibrate on. And you can change that with your thoughts, with your focus on the end result. And hold on to that and see yourself in that. More importantly even is feel yourself in it. Feel yourself as you would feel once you have accomplished what you want to accomplish. How does that feel? What kind of an emotion do you get then? That's not an easy one because you may choose for something in your life that you had never had before. So how on earth can you feel the feeling? Well, it's always an elated feeling. It's always a happy feeling what you're striving to. So look back in your life. What, what were some very happy moments? When you got married, when you graduated from university, look at some big events. I often say those who have either for women who have given birth to their first child and probably the second and the third also, but birth of a child and the, and the father also for the first time holding your child. I think I don't have any children. I believe that must be, and I've talked about, my, about that with my husband, he has children. He said, yes, that is one of the biggest moments in your life. There is so much emotion. So remember that emotion and put that same emotion, which was a very happy emotion, on the event that you, have, that you want to accomplish, on the situation, on how you want to be. How does that feel? Take that emotion and put it on there. Another way of feeling that is, suppose you're being interviewed by somebody like, Oprah Winfrey and she says you're so successful now why don't you tell us what you did and you perk up that whole story and you feel the emotion 
that's another one. Not my idea. I have learned that. I've read that somewhere. But the, 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 the thing that I wanted to talk to you about in wrapping up this is actually give yourself time. Allow yourself time. Realize that it does take work. But it's joyful work because the, the reward is so magnificent. So go to work. Keep at it. Know that every day is a step forward in the right direction. Keep at it. Sometimes you may rock your own boat and, and just get a little bit shaky. But come back on the path again. Come back on the path. Don't let anybody talk you out of it. If need be, you know change friends, drop your friends. If you have a, a partner who is not really on the same level with you, that's not an easy one. And I don't have an immediate advice for you what to do, but in your head, you can do whatever you want to do. Viktor Frankl, who wrote the book, Man's Life, Man, Man's Search for Meaning, he said that also because he was, a, he was a prisoner of war in the Second World War in the German prison camps. And he said, they can do anything to you, but they can never force you to think in another way that you want to think. So that may be something you can hold on to. So allow yourself some time. Read certain books over and over again. The Science of Getting Rich, Think and Grow Rich, um, Psycho-Cybernetics. Read them over and over again because you will become in a, a different person. And you will read the book with different eyes. I have probably read Science of uh, the, uh, what is it called? The uh, Think and Grow Rich. I probably read that book 25 times. I read something new every time. Ask Bob Proctor. He's been reading, he's been reading that book, Think and Grow Rich, for over 26 years. Every day he reads a little bit of it. And still, every day, he reads something different. He's, he reads it with different eyes. It's very impressive. So give yourself time. Pat yourself on the back that you're on the path. Expect that you are going to make improvements. Celebrate your little victories or big victories, your aha moments, your little breakthroughs, your big, big breakthroughs. Celebrate them because you are becoming a magnificent person, a magnificent creature. But give it a little bit of time. Don't say after six months, ah, it's not working. I haven't seen any result. Give yourself some time. So when you set goals and you put a date on it, I'm not always crazy about it, putting a date on it. Even Bob Proctor says when you when you hit that date of January 1st, you set your goal and it doesn't doesn't it doesn't show up at all. Don't fall into the abyss. Just go like, well, you know, maybe I did a little miscalculation, so you know. Let me put a couple of uh, other weeks on to it. Be gentle to yourself. Be gentle to yourself. Most important. Love yourself for everything that you're doing. Look yourself in the eye every morning in the mirror and you step out of the shower and just tell yourself, I love you. I truly, truly love you. It works. It works. It works. You have to be your best friend. You have to be in love with yourself. So give everything time. I know you can do it. I'm doing it. Others have done it. And it's just, it's in itself, it's magnificent. The changes that you perceive in yourself, it's magnificent. And then help others also. Never force it on them. Gently, gently help them a little bit. Assist them a little bit. Give them some little information. And if they don't want to go that way, let them be. It's their life's experience. I can rent on forever. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to leave you here. And thank you for watching. If you've watched it so far, I know you're on the right path. And if you want to hop on the uh, Think and Grow Rich call, the information is below. And if you want to contact me, Facebook me, chat with me, email me. There's even a telephone number. I am available always. You can always contact me. So thank you. Go for it. Be the shining light. Be the change. I believe in you. I know you can do it. Take care.